So the next topic in these design of steel structure is compression. The design of compression member. So so far we have discussed about the plastic analysis and the connections in that connections. We have discussed in detail about bolted connections and welded connections. And after that we have discussed design of tension member. So so now the next topic is design of compression member. We know what is meant by compression. Compression is nothing but two forces. Okay, two equal and opposite forces which are towards each other. So what is meant by tension? Two equal and opposite forces away from each other. Then that is tension. Then compression is nothing but two equal and opposite forces which are towards each other. That is known as compression. So now we are going to design that compression member. So now if we take a tension member, there we have discussed in detail that in practical, Okay, are in practicality where we are going to see those tension members where we are going to see those tension members in trusses yes or no so we are going to see the tension members in trusses so likewise where we are going to see these compression members in our field or in our civil engineering structures where we are going to see come on tell me where so we are going to observe these compression members in trusses so we know that the members of truss are subjected to both tension and compression but strictly speaking the member of truss is subjected to axial forces that nature of axial force may be tension or compression so in trusses we have we are having the compression member which are called as strut and if you take building okay, if you take the building so in building we are having the frames so frame consists of column and beams so in that also that column is considered as a compression member so now we can say that compression member we can see in two areas one is in truss and another in frame clear so if you take the compression member in truss then it is subjected to only axial compression clear but if you take the compression member in frame that is column so main load in that column is compression axial compression but along with that axial compression it is subjected to moment also because of eccentricity of load agree so that is only the difference between column and strut but both are classified under are classified as compression member so now we are here in this discussion we are going to discuss about design of compression member so coming to this design in this design of compression member so if you once uh, recollect the concepts what we have discussed in uh, design of tension members so then what is the major undesirable effect where we should take care about in the design of tension members so come on tell me what is the undesirable effect so it is obviously shear lag effect agree or not so likewise coming to the compression member the undesirable effect is buckling agree undesirable effect is buckling it means see for example assume that my palm or this hand as a compression member so buckling is nothing but so assume that this is the load like this okay this is the compression load like this in a column so because of this load chances are there for this column to buckle like this this is known as buckling agree this is known as buckling you can say buckling is nothing but lateral bending so buckling is nothing but lateral bending so lateral bending so that is the major undesirable effect in the design of compression member so in the design of compression member buckling so that buckling we are going to govern by using a factor known as slenderness ratio so we are going to govern or we are going to control that buckling by using a slenderness ratio so in the design of compression member slenderness ratio and material yield strength plays a major role or you can say the governing criteria in the design of compression member is slenderness ratio and then material yield strength so first take down that take it down take down that point so governing criteria of compression member is slenderness ratio which is kl by r so we represent the slenderness ratio by effective length by minimum radius of gyration and material yield strength so take it down clear so now the governing criteria of compression member is slenderness ratio and material yield strength so we represent material yield strength with 
f suffix y so we know that we are discussing from the beginning class itself clear so this is the these two are the major criteria in the design of compression number agree so this is the concept so now let us see the design compressive strength of a compression member or simply you can say design compressive strength so now let us see the design compressive strength so take it down so i'm going to explain the design compressive strength so design compressive strength we represent with p suffix d pd so design compressive strength is nothing but ae into fcd so this is the formula see as we are discussing from the beginning class itself or whenever we have started discussing the design that is maybe design of bolted connection or design of welded connection or design of tension member so wherever we are going to write the design strength so what is the formula for strength strength formula is nothing but area into stress agree or not so now here ae e is effective area ae is effective area effective area or uh, uh, we can say effective area and compression and fcd is design compressive stress design compressive stress clear so now regarding this for this design compressive strength code has given one formula based on perry robert stone approach okay based on perry robert stone approach the code book that is is 800 2007 so in our discussion we are discussing the limit state method so is 800 2007 is going to tell about that limit state method agree so now that code that code that is 800 has given some formula for this that formula is fcd is equal to the factor chi into fy by 1.1 Okay, so actually we have to take when whenever material is yielding or buckling, then we have to use yield stress and factor of safety is one point one. Agree? So simply in this place we have to use F Y into F Y by one point one. But in addition to that buckling and yielding, it is going to uh, produce lateral buckling that is known as lateral bending. So because of that we have to use this factor. Okay, because of that we have to use this factor. So this factor is known as stress reduction factor. So this is actually is a Greek alphabet. Okay, this is a Greek alphabet chi. So this is nothing but stress reduction factor. Stress reduction factor. So now formula for this is according to the code. So now that factor chi is equal to one by five plus under root five square minus lambda square. That is the formula for that chi. Again, five. Now five formula is point five into one plus alpha lambda minus point two plus lambda square. Agree? So that is the formula for five. So five is a simply mathematical term. Now coming to the lambda. So if you see this formula, one more term is there. That is lambda. So lambda is nothing but non-dimensional. non dimensional slenderness ratio non dimensional slenderness ratio whose formula is under root fy by fcc we know that fy what is fy fy is the yield stress now what is fcc fcc is the euler's critical stress euler's critical stress So I guess regarding this, you have studied in strength of materials. Euler's crippling load. What is the formula for Euler's crippling load? Come and tell me. What is the formula? Recollect. So it is P C R is equal to pi square E I by L F X square. Agree or not? So the same. If you divide that formula by I, sorry, formula by area. So we are going to get stress. Agree or not? Pi square E I by L F X R pi square A E by R square. Agree or not? So now. The stress formula pi square e i by lambda square or not lambda sorry lambda slenderness ratio. So you know critical stress. This concept I guess you have studied in strength of materials. Okay. So this is about the lambda. Next one more factor is there here. It is nothing but alpha. So alpha is nothing but 
imperfection factor imperfection factor the value of alpha can be calculated based on the types of buckling so here we are having some four types of buckling so the types of buckling based on the rob perry robert stone approach okay perry robert stone approach so based on the perry robert stone approach the lambda alpha has some values based on perry robert stone approach we are adding some types of buckling classes so buckling class and alpha value so here we are having four types of buckling class a b c d and here alpha values are 0 0.21 0 0.34 0 0.49 and 0 0.76 So these are the values of alpha. So mainly the column buckles in this class C. So the alpha value we have to consider in the design of our compression member is 0.49. So this is about the design compressive stress. Okay, this is about design compressive stress. So take note.